Hello, fans. How you doing? This is Frank Severo. Hey, got Frank Severo official side on YouTube. Anyway, listen, get, get in the role of Django Badando in Godfather Part 2. So I'm going to tell you the story from the beginning like I did in Instagram by Severo Frank. So anyway, to all the fans on YouTube, uh, yeah, it was in a September 1973 when I got a phone call. It was on a Sunday. And I was getting ready to open up my pizzeria. And anyway, I was living in East New York, Brooklyn then. So uh, we usually opened up about 11 o'clock in, uh, in the morning. So as I arrived there and getting ready to open up, put some pizzas in the oven, I get a phone call. And it's the casting director calling me about The Godfather Part Two, and telling me that Francis Ford Coppola had flown all night from Lake Tahoe and he's in Manhattan and he would like to see you. So why don't you go ahead and make a couple of pies, you know, pizza pies and some sandwiches and uh, he says, the only, you the only actor they're going to see uh, is got a meeting with some other people behind the scenes. So get there as soon as possible. So anyway, finally, after I got off the phone, I called my brother at the house down the street. And I said, Pat, I asked him, do me a favor. I said, I just got a call. The, the director's in, in New York. He's in Manhattan. And he flew in all night from Lake Tahoe to see me and also take care of some other business behind the scenes. Can you come over and take over, make me a couple of pizzas and some sandwiches while I come into the house and wash up and get ready and, uh, and hit the road and go meet with him. So anyway, uh, he did that and pretty much uh, I got in the car, got the pizzas and it was, it was, a, it was a hot day that day and um, I put the pizzas in the car and I was trying to keep the pizzas warm. And I didn't know how to keep them warm, you know, it's about 25 minute ride. I went through just about every red light you could think, and uh, it was a Sunday. So uh, anyway, what happened, I finally arrived there, and I, and I arrived in the front of the hotel, and I didn't know, there was no parking anywhere. I just decided to park right in front of the hotel there, and took out the pizzas, walked in, and uh, I didn't care about being told. And in those days, it was pretty expensive, which I'm pretty sure today is a lot of money. We're going back to September 1973. Here I am, 21 years old, you know. So um, so as I go in, I bought the elevator. And in those days, they had the old elevators where they were operated by men or women. So uh, we're waiting, and there's uh, I'm waiting, and there's two gentlemen in there, and then both of them... Um, and most, actually, both of them said to me, uh, you must be Jenko. I said, uh, I guess so. He says, well, my name is Angela Graham, and the other one says, I'm Dean Tabaleras. I'm set designer and art director. Wow. I said, nice to meet you. I said, you know, now these two guys were Oscar winners. So anyway, long story short, we're both waiting for the elevator. We're finally, the elevator arrives. We get in, and we're going up to Francis' room, suite. So we get there. And the um, door opens, there's Francis Ford Coppola, greets me, greets them, and there's a whole bunch of kids and all these children who were young in those days, you know, so, uh, and there was a couple of producers and his assistant in there, his assistant. So I said, come, come in, Frank, come in, and told the other guys, come in. So uh, I gave them the pizzas. Why, wow, they smell good? I said, they are good. So they open up the boxes of pizza and, and they're pretty much, uh, they're, they're, demolish it yeah, they went through the whole thing and Francis asked me if I had you know it was okay if I weighed and I said yeah no problem take your time you know so um, I think almost a couple of hours uh, I went by and I, I was smoking those days I went through take a pack of cigarettes <laughs> maybe even more I don't even know but anyway uh, so what happened is finally they got discussing locations and sets and everything and uh, they couldn't shoot in Cuba they had to shoot in San Domingo's the stuff with Pacino when he's there meeting with Hyman Roth so um, they finally got to me after all, I think a couple of hours went by and then he asked me he says listen this this is the script from the Godfather part two and uh, it was a pretty big script you know so he said, I want you to go through the scenes I want you to do it in Sicilian dialogue. I said, I'm going to read with you. I'm going to do them English. You're going to do them Sicilian. So go to the next room. Go over. When you're ready, just come out and tell me that you're ready. So basically, I went in the next room. Maybe five, seven minutes went by and uh, came out and I said, Francis, I'm ready for you. If you're ready. Said, you're ready already? I said, yeah. So um, 
we walked in, the, myself, uh, Francis, and the, some of the producers, and the door was pretty much open, and everybody was quiet. So we do the scenes together. I do the first time, you know, I do my things. I want you to be happy, good luck, you know. It's your girlfriend, this and that, that you see, and you're taking them to impress them, you know, about your girlfriend and everything else. And um, obviously, uh, uh, we go back and forth twice, three times, and finally he says, hey, you got the job. I says, wow. He says, what, is, what do you mean? I got, I got the job. He says, Dad, the role is yours. I said, wow. He says, thank you. Thank you so much. So now he congratulates me, and um, the other producers uh, congratulate me. Everybody's congratulating me. And uh, finally, uh, Francis asked me, he says, do you know Robert De Niro? I, I said, uh, no, I, I don't know. I, I don't know him. He says, did you see Mean Streets? I says, no. Uh, is the movie out? Uh, well, he has seen a screening of it, and obviously he had met Robert De Niro before. So uh, anyway, I said, no, and the movie didn't come out. This is September. The movie hadn't opened until December, of, almost Christmas of 1973. So he says, listen, he's going to play Vito Colleoni, and you're going to be Jane Corbadondo. Is it okay if he calls you and you guys could work on the language together because you speak the language fluently? And... Um, so I said, yeah, give him my number, sure. Have him give me a call and we get together and we'll work in the language. I'll do the best I can, whatever, you know, to make the roles and the characters more, as believable as possible and whatever I could do to help. So pretty much uh, that was my discussion with him. And again, one of the producers comes over, his name was Fred Roos. And he says, uh, Frank, I mean, I'm so happy for you. Do you know the impact that this is going to do for your career? And so I said, I really don't know. He said, well, you know, Godfather 1 was so successful and the sequel is going to be, uh, you know, I think as we think as successful, if not even bigger. And it's a big role. It was a big role. Django Badanda was a very important role in the novel. And it was also a big role in Godfather 2. But, you know, a lot of stuff was cut, end up in the editing room. And uh, so I was working with this guy, Robert De Niro, that I didn't uh, know who he was. We didn't know each other. Nobody was knew really who he had done some films. Uh, he had a movie that was a big movie, studio movie, and then he had done some movies with Brian De Palma. I found out later on, and uh, pretty much I had worked in some movies too. But he had done leads, and I had done you know co-starring roles, and I'd done some TV shows. Uh, this is again '73. I began my career in '66. Study with the master of method, which was Lee Strasberg at that time, and uh, I was with him for a long time. So, anyway, getting back to uh, the impact that the producer was telling me, and uh, so anyway, everybody congratulated me. I was happy, uh, and pretty much uh, it was it. You know uh, that, that Robert De Niro was going to call me, and I was going to work with him in the language, get together, and I was going to meet Robert De Niro for the first time. So, I, I finally said goodbye. You know, they all hugged me and thanked me, and uh, I left the room. So instead of taking the elevator, I took the stairs. So I went down the stairs, and I, I don't know, I flew down the stairs. And I remember there was the last couple of steps, I uh, I fell. So, <laughs> and in those days, you know, you had to, the phones, you had to go into the phone booth, put coins in there. So I went to call, I didn't call my family. I, called, I went to call my best friend. And uh, he answered the phone, he says, what happened? You knew I was going to meet Francis, and so I said, I got the job. He says, get over here. He says, hurry up, get here. He says, uh, and we'll open up some champagne and have a good time. And that's what we did. You know, I, I got back to the neighborhood, back in East New York, and I went inside the social club. We had our own social club where we played cards, hung on, you know, with the guys. And um, pretty much uh, I got a little bit of hangover that night, you know, from partying. Of course, my family knew then, you know, they were happy also, but in, they didn't understand the business that well. So, um, and uh, pretty much uh, that was it, you know. So I will tell you more about uh, getting together with Robert De Niro and uh, working together with him on the language and also being friends in the movie. And the journey um, begins on uh, the studying of the characters, the, the Italian language, and uh, which I was very helpful to a lot of the actors that were involved with me. And um, I got to meet some great, great, great actors from Italy, and uh, I will tell you more in the ne next segment. So continue to watch me on uh, Frank Severo Official YouTube, 
And I will tell you more stories after I meet De Niro and uh, what happens after that. Thank you.